What is it to be a human being? Homo sapiens sapien. That's the scientific name of our species. For tens of thousands of years, our ancestors struggled, fought, and died against other tribes of humans, against saber-toothed cats and woolly mammoths, Bengal tigers, to simply survive. The main mission of our species has been to survive on a hostile planet that we developed on. And now you have people in the lap of luxury with all the entertainment, more food than they can eat. Even the poorest of our society in the Western world is much better off than our ancestors, living like kings, and we don't appreciate it. And this is the big secret. We don't appreciate it because we're not designed to thrive in a society of milk and honey, of plenty. We are designed to thrive in an atmosphere of incredible danger and of amazing pressures. We are an incredible species that has brought you Beethoven and minds like Albert Einstein, human minds more than 110 years ago developed the theory of atomics, Max Planck. The human mind created equations that can destroy entire cities. We can do incredible things, positive things and destructive things. Humanity is magic. Humanity can literally reach to the stars and beyond. The development of our species at this point is only the larval stage. And we're now going into a phase where we're literally in a cocoon and about to metamorphosize into something else. And during this time of flux, our species, all the genetic and racial memories, all of the inherited memories, aren't integrating with this modern society of convenience and all the food we can eat and the entertainment and the decadence because the pleasure centers of the mind and the uh, things that the controlled corporate media uh, force feeds are only a limited spectrum of our intellect and what we are. Our ancestors struggled and fought and died against the elements, against wild animals, against barbarous tribes of fellow humans to succeed and success was to simply survive and now we see these giant decadent masses of people who aren't appreciating life who are becoming nihilistic who have a death wish who hate everything that's good and wholesome you see on the internet all these videos in the last few years uh, where it shows beautiful women abusing animals this is the new pornography People are becoming psychopathic. They're degenerating psychologically. I want you to look yourself in the mirror and really ask yourself a question. Meditate on it. Think about it. What is it to be a human being? Who are we as a species? We're creatures that live on a beautiful planet orbiting a sun two-thirds of the way out on the spiral arm of the Milky Way galaxy. Our species developed on this planet over hundreds of thousands of years. Our ancestors fought to survive against the elements, against wild animals, and against tribes. Survival was success for our species. It was the French philosopher Victor Hugo that said, adversity makes men, prosperity makes monsters. And in that simple statement, you understand the human experience and who we are. People that have plenty of food and housing and clothing, they are depressed, they're unhappy, they feel like they're missing something in their life because fundamentally they don't understand what it is to be human. Survival and raising your children to be happy and successful and healthy is victory. 
Every generation making the world a better place than the previous one is victory. People have been taught by the corporate brainwashing machine to be self-centered, to not care about others. And in that, they've lost their very humanity. They don't understand that life is transitory. We're just like the flowers that come up every year in the spring and blossom throughout the summer and then die in the fall and winter. But through the species, through humankind, we live on. And everything we do to each other affects the species itself. Madison Avenue tries to make you feel inadequate so that you'll buy into their products, so that you'll feel like you need to accept their mode of control if you're going to be fulfilled. And the more people buy into that, the more nihilistic and destructive they get. We have a society that is collapsing, that is crumbling, because we build up drug addict sports icons and uh, Hollywood people and all of these uh, rock stars who are the worst expression of humanity because they become so wealthy that they're unhappy. They're not appreciative of the basic things they have. They've lost sight of that secret that humanity was forged under incredible degradation on the edge of extinction. If you go back more than 100 years ago, in 1900, Max Planck developed the theory of atomics. The equations that sprung from his mind created nuclear power. And yes, the atom bomb that can destroy entire cities. Humanity is made in the image of God. We are an incredible species with a destiny to populate the stars, to go beyond the stars. We can't even imagine our full potential. Just like somebody 6,000 years ago in Mesopotamia or Egypt couldn't imagine a cell phone or a 747, couldn't imagine an MRI or a firearm. We take it for granted like it's nothing. We don't appreciate the good things in life, the simple things in life. And so people are becoming more and more decadent, more and more self-destructive. Suicide is off the charts. Upwards of 20% of the population is on psychotropic, mind-numbing drugs. People don't feel fulfilled. They complain that life is boring. Life is boring? You are on a planet with all of this incredible biodiversity and all of this beauty and creativity. You need to realize that just being conscious, simply being alive, and being able to struggle in whatever your pursuit is, whether it's art or literature, or whether you're an auto mechanic, or a doctor, or a lawyer, or a filmmaker, it doesn't matter. It's all about that human experience and what you add to the species, what you add to the society. Individuals die. And selfish individuals die before they physically perish. And they don't realize that it is an experience of humanity, of Homo sapiens sapiens, of our species to add to humanity's wealth, their intellectual wealth, our physical wealth. And that when you truly join with the human spirit and everything that is decent and wholesome and good, everything that your conscience, your compass tells you is good, that you will bloom and that you will literally accelerate towards a higher level of enlightenment. But the minute that you buy into this corporate culture of death, you are destroyed. Learn to recognize and appreciate and defend and protect beauty. Don't give in to that uh, sociopathic or even psychopathic uh, desire to get into the dark side and destructiveness. Become conscious of the fact that you individually are only alive one time in this earth suit that our intellect inhabits, but that through a love of humanity and a love of creativity and investigation and the love of exploration that you will live forever and that the human experience has always been about a struggle against things that are good and uplifting, and things that are destructive. Destruction is easier. It's quicker. It's very seductive. 
But when you begin to try to literally tune in to the essence that is our species and our true potential, you will be able to have a glimpse of wider horizons that open up into a wide universe of possibilities and you will be on your knees at a spiritual level realizing the incredible blessing and honor it is to be a human being who has been given the gift of consciousness. I'm going to say it again. Your body will fail. You will die. But the ideas, the inventions, the works that you commit while you are alive and conscious will have reverberations throughout time and space for eternity. You will live forever through your children and through other humans' children. This is the great secret. And the great evil of the New World Order engineers is that they fully understand this primal rule. And they have made the greedy, selfish decision to keep these great truths from humanity that would fulfill and empower our species. They are afraid of you finding your true potential and power because when you become enlightened and awakened and expand your horizons, you threaten their monopoly of power and control. The solution is looking at you in the mirror. And you won't develop yourself overnight. No one does. Life is a process. You have to make that decision. You have to access those racial memories that all humans have, your instincts. You have to understand that the scientific controllers that manipulate this technological dictatorship of the mind are afraid of the human species. They know the truth. They understand the wider possibilities of humanity. They know that our species is stronger when it's under adversity. They understand that we need to be challenged. And instead, they create a bed of decadence and evil and sell it to you like it's risky and cool and risque and avant-garde to be decadent and destructive and to not care about your fellow humans because they want to isolate you so they can control you and dominate every facet of your life. But at the end of your time on this planet, you need to be proud of what you've done. You need to be proud of how you've lived. This is a message to the future, a message to free humanity that we don't let our species be destroyed, that we don't let ourselves become dehumanized. It is the greatest crime in history that the establishment, that the social engineers are dumbing us down by design, that they are nurturing and funding and activating and promoting all of the most base instincts and things that are destructive so that we can be basically damaged goods that they can control and use as their biological androids, as their slaves. We have been destroyed by our own prosperity. We have become anesthetized by all the entertainment and the food and the drugs. We have to rediscover the fact that this is a human experience, a struggle by our species to survive and to grow and to become even greater. That's what it is to be a human. And when you look at the beauty around you, when you realize just how good and special life is, when you appreciate it, then you will be fulfilled. The Western world is crumbling because we are individually crumbling on the inside, because we've bought in to the propaganda of Madison Avenue, because we have uh, let the controllers of our society misdirect our basic human drive and instinct to love and to fight and to be passionate and real. In the global controller's quest to domesticate and dumb us down so they can control and dominate the future, they have damaged the human species. They have misdirected our prime directive to grow and to build and to search and to trailblaze and explore. But the minute you start exploring and creating and loving life is the minute that the pendulum begins to swing from tyranny and dehumanization towards liberty. 
and a literal Valhalla for future generations. And it's that quest, that quest towards being a better species that we will truly find our destiny. You have become compartmentalized. We all have. Of course, you know about the pyramidal power structure where only the very tip top understands all the secrets, knows how it all fits together. It's similar to Legos. Individually, it doesn't make anything, but together it makes a greater whole. And it's how the military and intelligence agencies operate. It's a need-to-know basis. And if you look at this as a ship, as nation states, as countries, as ships, you've got people in catering, people in food, uh, people in uh, laundry, in cleaning, you've got the security force, you've got the people down in the engine room. And the engine room is basically the bureaucracy and the courts. But who is the captain? The captain knows everything going on on that ship. The captain is commanding all those different separate parts. And that's a perfect example of globalism and how they use compartmentalization to keep the mass of people on the ship unaware of the larger picture. They're not outside the box. So you've got the captain of the ship. He's in control of all the different aspects, all the different pieces that come together. The subgroups on the ship, they only know their specific duty. But the captain... He has the big picture over the ship, over the nation. Well, what is globalization? Globalization is where there's an international company bigger than the nations, bigger than all the ships, that controls and dominates and finances all those ships. And that's international banking cartels. They create endless trillions of fiat currency, and they buy the whole world with it. It's a hat trick. It's a fraud. It's a magician's parlor scam. And that's what's happening. So not only do we have an evil captain, the rest of the ship isn't aware of what's going on, but they know the direction they're going in is bad. But the captain himself is just an agent to the globalist that control all the ships. The New World Order are truly the captains and the shipping magnet owners of this global dehumanization system. The globalists don't care about you and your family. They've got all this slick propaganda about how they want to take your rights to keep you safe. They want to naked body scan you in the airports and have surveillance blimps and face scanning and license plate scanning cameras to keep you safe. They claim it's for little men in caves in Central Asia that want to come and kill you. But when you research it, you find out those men in caves are financed by the intelligence agencies to stage the crises to scare you into running into the arms of the globalist. Conservatively, hundreds of thousands of Iraqis died during the war of 2003 through 2011. And if you think that the global controllers care any more about you than they do about those Iraqis, you're blind. These are cold-blooded people. 20 years ago, our government would criticize China and its authoritarian policy of taking Buddhist and Falun Gong and others and executing them and harvesting their organs. But now our media, our State Department, our government says nothing. We all know the Nazis tortured people and they were the bad guys. We all know that the Northern Vietnamese tortured our troops. So do the North Koreans. They were the bad guys. But now we're told torture is good. Torture is moral. The heroes on television, in the dramas, and the cop shows torture people. You are being bathed, I am being bathed, and conditioned to accept classical oppression, classical evil. It's happened over and over and over again in history. And when the population becomes decadent and stops caring and stops getting involved and turns loose of any responsibility, evil floods in to all the major systems of power in the government and in the corporations, and society implodes like we've seen in Mexico and North Korea and so many other places. The globalists see you as a product. They see you as a dumbed-down sheep, a biological android to be used to serve them they are arrogant, they are hateful, and free humanity needs to find its guts again and stand up and say, I am not your property, I am not your slave, I'm a human being, I have value, and I am not going to submit to your tyranny. We need to find our humanity. We need to find our will to resist. They have all these gladiatorial diversions, all these vestigial sports games where men are supposed to put all their tribal energies into, these simulated gladiatorial wars. 
the energy of resistance and war and of standing up against oppression is engineered into you because our species wouldn't have survived and you wouldn't be here if your ancestors hadn't stood up for themselves. And we all need to find that tectonic energy of liberty and turn it loose and set brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere. We live in a country and a world where world government is openly being established and where trillions in tax money is being paid to shadowy offshore banks. And when Congress asks the Federal Reserve, where did the money go, they tell Congress, we're not going to tell you. This is an outrageous affront in our face. We're being trained to accept police tasering us for no reason. We're being trained to accept naked body scanners. We're being domesticated and having our will broken so that as individuals and as a society, our women, our children, and all of us can be conditioned to become nothing but cattle to this ruling elite. And so many of you that serve the system believe that you're on a power trip and that you're part of the control mechanism and that you're on the winning team. If you'd actually studied history and sociology and anthropology, you'd know that the first group that gets exterminated are those that help bring the tyranny to power. You have been warned. Our society is crumbling and degenerating. They are filling the vaccines full of eugenic chemicals to sterilize us, to brain damage us, and to make us more servile and more submissive. And we've got all the major foundation documents and government documents that admit it. You have been warned. There is no way you can deny this information. All you need to do is go look at what I'm covering here to find out that it's true for yourself. You notice that all these private mercenaries are now operating all over the world, but also in the United States against the American people. And the police are becoming more and more armed. And they're now starting to station military in our major cities. The balance of power is shifting towards the state with physical force because they know that you're waking up. They know you're becoming aware. They know that you're peacefully starting to take your communities back one mind at a time. And so they're moving in to demonize individuals being armed. And they're moving in to demonize the Second Amendment that is not only the individual right to keep and bear arms, but the fact that the main police force for security is the American people. Every time there's a hurricane, every time there's an emergency, when people really need guns, government comes in in New Orleans, in North Carolina, and says, you can't own guns, you've got to turn them in. And they demonize the militia that's part of our Second Amendment. And to bring down the militia, the government has been caught creating racist and out-of-control groups that are cartoonish in their camouflage to make the idea of an armed citizenry look stupid. Realize what they're doing to you. We are the people. We are the government. We created this government. Of course the people in a free nation are armed. Only slaves are disarmed. The first people to have their rights taken to own guns were African Americans in this country after the Civil War. Gun control is a tool of enslavement. Only free men and women have the right to keep and bear weapons. You get a Democrat in office, and everybody gets angry at them because they're carrying out the globalist agenda. Then they put a Republican in office, and the people get angry because they carry out the same agenda. Then they put another Democrat in, and it goes on and on and on. And the office of the presidency has been given all this unconstitutional power with executive orders and uh, all this warrantless wiretapping and all the police state control. The last time our Congress declared war was World War II. The Congress represents the people. It declares the war. Then the president executes it. But we have the office of the presidency being turned into this demigod position. But it's a hollow position. They're not even really a dictator. They are a spokesperson for the National Security Council and the private corporate dictatorship that's been created. But presidents serve another role. They're basically birdcage liner. They put in Bush, they put in Obama, they put in other presidents, and when the bird, that's the New World Order, gets done crapping on it, they remove the birdcage liner, the president, blame everything on it, and we never discuss the bird that soiled the birdcage liner. Think about sodium fluoride in the water. The majority of FDA scientists have come out in the last decade and said, take it out of the water. It increases cancer. It causes reductions in fertility. It causes all these other serious problems. But the government says, we're going to force medicate you supposedly for your teeth. And then they say, oh, we're going to force you to take vaccines. And every year, hundreds of new vaccines get approved, and the big pharma companies come in and lobby the government to try to mandate that you take those shots. 
As a free human, you have no responsibility to take their vaccines. Stand up and say, no, you're not going to put things in my body. More than a decade ago, I received secret documents from a nurse in San Antonio detailing that for more than three decades, blood was taken, not just in the United States, but in every industrialized country, from newborn babies. Parents were told it was going for a blood test, but it was really going to a secret global bioweapons database. So they have your genetic number and can even make a specific bioweapon for you individually. In the last three years, they've now declassified this information in your face. This government is so secretive, so creepy, that they've been taking your blood worldwide. We're already under a world government, ladies and gentlemen. We need to discover and realize the magic that is all around us, how wonderful life is. But we also have to learn to recognize corruption and evil and route it out and stand up against it. We need to stop being so passive and realize that there are all these different agendas going on and become conscious of that fact and wake up and save this species. It's up to you. The ball is in your court. The American empire was designed to fall. In 1913, the private banks took over the country and set up the Federal Reserve. They've run up our national credit card. They've used us to build their empire. We've taken the blame for all of these imperial wars launched by these private robber barons. And now the globalists are just going to move on. The United States is being destroyed by design. The empire that we've become is being destroyed by design. And everyone instinctively knows it. So instead of having a fatalistic, I don't care about the world, screw everybody attitude, decide that you're going to wake up and stand up and get involved with others to defeat this dehumanization. Think about your ancestors. They didn't give up under adversity, under starvation, under warring tribes attacking them, cannibals, wild animals, earth changes. They struggled. A lot of people didn't make it. But your ancestors struggled and went through hell, regardless of what color you are, whether you're German, Jewish, Chinese, Mexican, it doesn't matter. Your ancestors went through hell and worked their fingers to the bone, and many of them died so you could be here today and have what you've got. Let's not let a bunch of control freaks take control of our society. They've learned how humans operate. They know the secrets I know. Now you know these secrets. Stand up. Reclaim your humanity. We could smash these parasites and stand up for liberty. Does that mean we're going to find some utopia, that everything's going to be fine? No. But if we give in to corruption, if we give up, we know we're going to hell in a handbasket. It's only when we stand up for something good and pure and strong that we've got a chance. I'm Alex Jones. Thank you for watching. I'm sick of the